Hello everybody, welcome back to After School Art Studio. We are on day two of the second project. Yesterday we went outside to the side of my house where I have a lot of different kinds of plants and we went searching for plants that had different shapes and plenty of texture on the back. We were looking for these plants because we wanted to use them for printing. We came back into my house and then we got my markers out and we used the markers to apply color to the back of the leaves and then we printed the leaf with the ink um, onto copy paper. We use two kinds of copy papers, the white and another color, as well as brown paper that I had. Um, I don't know when I got that paper bag, but I had it somewhere. So today we're going to work on the next step. Hopefully you cut your leaves out and these, this is how it looks. I want to say, my goodness, the leaves look so beautiful when they're cut out because there's even more focus on the edges and of course if you look really closely you'll start to see all the detail and the combination of colors so we're going to use these leaves to create our art piece so today what you're going to need are the leaves that you cut out as well as glue and your Sharpie. I want to say thick and thin. So extra fine or ultra fine point and fine point. All right, so first of all, you're going to figure out which leaves you want. You're going to experiment with arrangement. As you're placing it on the paper, I want you to make sure that two of the leaves are partially off the page and two of the leaves are overlapping in two areas. Okay, so when you're placing it down, this, part, this leaf is off the page, this one is off the page, and then so that's required two off the page and then two of them need to be overlapping so I'll place this this way well look they're talking to each other here i think i will overlap this piece here and then i will overlap this piece but I'll face it downwards there we go you can look at it and say I think I like this I go hmm maybe not so maybe I want to switch this around here this is gonna still stay partially off the page and this one is gonna go I think I want it to go downwards there there we go so actually I used all my leaves uh, maybe you have more leaves you don't have to include them all but I want to say you should at least use eight leaves there we go okay once you're happy with your placement let me review again two of them have to be partially off the page and two of them have to be overlapping one leaf on top the other you see it doesn't have to be totally but at least partially these two are partially overlapping one on each other okay once you're happy with the arrangement then you start your gluing so here we go here's my elmer's glue and be um conscious of you see this leaf here this part of the leaf is going to hang over so i'm not going to put glue on that part so you don't need a lot of glue because this paper this paper is so light it doesn't need half the bottle of glue so making sure that all the edges are glue um, glue has been applied to them and you really don't have to put any glue in the center 
because this leaf is so light or this paper leaf is so light it doesn't probably need that so here we go where's the part where I didn't put glue on so remember this one is hanging off the page so I'm going to have the part where I didn't put glue it's hanging off the page and the rest is going to be glued down be really careful because this paper is so thin this copy paper it's easily ripped so there we go take another piece this one is a little trickier i got to remember the spot i'm going to move this guy down once again this guy he's totally glued down so i'm just gonna put glue all over the edges and everything the edges are really important because you don't want those edges to rip. Okay. And then I think it was right about here. And then remember, this is the one that's overlapping. So I'm going to get this pointy guy. There we go. Okay. Whoops. My glue bottle. Okay, um, I think this is changed, but I like it changed. Hmm, how should we do it? Well, I'm just going to do it this way. All right, there. So now they're overlapping. Okay, so you do the same for all the leaves. Remember, two of them have to be partially off the page, and two of them have to be overlapping. And the rest, you can do whatever you want with them. Okay, I already have one already done. So let me move this guy away. there we go this is already glued down did this yesterday so now you're gonna have to flip this guy over because remember we have some that's coming off the page in fact I made three off the page this this and this right so get your scissors did I say we need scissors we need scissors <laughs> all right and then we're just going to follow the edge of the paper and cut the overlap off there we go and that last one I guess if you want to do more than two that's fine but at least two there we go well, that's nice okay so you see how this these guys come off the page and they just disappear because we cut it off right there that's kind of nice it kind of when you do that when you have things go off the page and it, it just either is cut off or disappears, it makes the visual plane or the visual area, your eyes are allowed to just go off. If everything is contained like this, your eyes tend to stay on this little rectangle. But because these come off the page, it gives you almost like permission to go zit and then maybe come back here, zit, and then come up here and zit. You know, because there's all those pathways in. Okay, so that's all glued down. Ooh, look how nice that is. Okay, now you're going to get your Sharpie. You got two kinds of Sharpie. And before we even start this, I want to I wanna show you what um, we're going to do by using a scratch paper. Where's my scratch paper? Yeah, go grab a scratch paper and it can be anything any sort of paper that you have around the house but i want you to experiment before we even apply um what we're going to do here all right so now you're going to use patterns here's my example of patterns to start to fill this spaces around it you see there's a space here this space that comes down here and on the side there's all that space around it that's actually called negative space this is the positive space the leaves that you see and the stuff that's around it is called negative space but we're going to design the negative space now using pattern and pattern is drawing something and you repeat it over and over so it's pretty self-explanatory i have stars here but i to make a pattern of stars i made it several times there's a heart several made one and i kept on making that's a pattern 
Here's just line dot, line dot, and I made it in a curve shape. That's a curvy line dot pattern. Look at this right here. It looks like cashews. It looks like little nuts or peanuts. Repeated it over and over. Even the number five, I put it close together, repeated it over and over. Now that becomes a pattern. So you're going to figure out patterns or which patterns you want to fill this negative space. Okay, first we're going to just try things out. So something as simple as like a grain of rice can be a pattern. The grain of rice is not touching each other. That is a pattern because I'm just repeating it over and over. There we go. You can use that same pattern and make them close together. Have them touch each other and it looks really different oops that's a big blob thingy it looks different when it's touching each other comparing these two here and that's that skinny sharpie now i'm going to try and use this thick sharpie oh that looks really different using that thick sharpie far apart and then close together Ooh, so when it starts touching those the black that's around it just looks like negative space there we go so play around with this a little bit before you even start so you kind of get an idea of what's happening before you start experimenting on your beautiful artwork okay so experiment on your scratch paper and now we're going to get our artwork and start now you're going to look at areas and figure out where do i want to stop you know what you might want to plan it first or you might just want to start and don't even plan and figure it out as you go along do not first use a pencil and then use a sharpie i want you to only use a sharpie so i'm going to use that grain of rice idea so right on the sides or the negative space of this piece it's really like kind of what you might think of a background because the subject matter is the leaves and this is the negative space around it so I'm using that grain of rice pattern and I'm filling this little area here Ooh, look at that that's nice when you put that, when you make a pattern, it starts to have texture to it. Ooh, that's really nice. I think I'll make the grain of rice start poking through here. And then he starts emerging to this side. There we go. Ooh, look at that. In fact, let's go put more grains of rice here. Now it feels like the leaf is on a bed of rice that looks like raw rice. There we go. And because I put the pattern very close to the leaf without touching it, because, oh, like that, I just touched that shoot. Oh well. But because I get really close to the edge here, you start really. It starts highlighting the edge of the leaf. Ooh, it's so um, meditative. Making the leaves or the little um, grains of rice. Ooh, that's really nice. Like it fell on top of a bed of rice right there. Okay, let us let me experiment with the thicker Sharpie. I'm going to use that same imagery, the grains of rice, but I'm going to change the Sharpie to this bigger Sharpie. Ooh, that looks different. Same shape, but different Sharpie, this thicker Sharpie. And this Sharpie, I think it's a little on the older side. So you know when you use a Sharpie for a while, the tip gets a little bit flat, which is okay. It's just different, right? Sometimes when you, when you buy this, um, straight from the store, the tip is pretty hard and the point is pretty sharp. But this one, like I said, I think it's old, so it has a different look to it. Ooh, that's nice. Super strong. I'm going to bring it around here 
to the other grains of rice. All right, keep on going, keep on going. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, think of another pattern. That grain of rice is a really easy one to use. Um, you can just use some lines. In fact, yeah, let me just use lines. Hey, look at the stippling. You can just use dots. Let's use some lines, all right? Um, how about I use lines? So I'm going to make the lines go from one, <clears throat> one um, leaf to the other. Right here. I'm trying not to touch the leaf. I'm trying to just to stay in the negative space area. Oh, that's nice. Pattern, pattern is repeating something over and over. And because we're filling the area with pattern, it looks way different from just the white area. It really gives a lot of life to the background or the negative space. So when you're using this technique, this really, you don't really have to plan too much. It's just as it goes, you're starting to create something. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to continue this. And look at that. It's just lines. All right, I'm going to change it to make the skinny lines. But I'm going to bring those skinny lines really close. Ooh, it kind of reminds me of a zebra. Ooh, when it gets to this part, I'm going to curve it to this guy. So it has kind of an arch to it. See what I did? Like no planning. I just felt like doing it. So now it looks like the strings are falling to the other side. It almost looks like the gills of a fish. Ooh, that's nice. And then I'm going to bring it down here. Trying not to touch that leaf. So you don't have like dots in the end of the leaves. It takes a lot of control and concentration so fun I want to say it's so meditative okay let's try one more pattern hmm which one should we do swirls let's do swirls okay let's do swirls or let's do something angular like um, maybe these squares let's try that okay let's choose this area down here so I'm gonna make those squares now, you, you see all that poster that I have? You don't have to do any of that. You can try to create a pattern using uh, something drawn um, from your imagination. Or sometimes when you just go out to nature, you'll look and see there's pattern there. Plenty of times when, a lot of times when you're wearing a t-shirt, you just look down on your t-shirt and hey, there's some pattern there next to the, like the Nike swoosh or something. Sometimes that happens. It's, you, if you start to know what pattern is, then you'll start observing that there's plenty of pattern around us in nature, in advertisement, on a plate that you're eating from. There's plenty of pattern everywhere. Ooh, that's really nice. And it's kind of cool because it's angular, but everything is curvy, organic from nature because the leaves are all curvy. But now you're bringing in this really, these things with corners. It gives a little bit of tension and a different feel. Okay, so now we, so I want you to fill this whole background with pattern. So you can't stop right and then that'll be the end of the project so let me show you um, the finished product well let me show you um, what I would do but I'm gonna speed up the video so you don't have to just watch me make my pattern so slowly okay watch what happens
Okay, here's the finished product, or here's the finished piece. And as you noticed at the very end, I I um, used a, sh a thicker sharpie and I I sealed or I made a line right on the edge. I used a marker and I made it halfway on and halfway on my scratch paper so that it wouldn't mark up the table. So have fun with this. Use the two different Sharpies and um, use pattern. Okay, I'll see you next time and we'll start on a brand new project. Okay, bye.